you know, one down low, one up high. I really think the challenge for Azulis will be that mid-range game. Will Mike Hopkins guys allow him or even dare him to take those mid-range jumpers? How about the backcourt? Kirk Creesa, the best headband game in the Pac-12, dare I say, in the country. <laughs> I mean, he's going to hear it today. They're expecting a near-capacity crowd. Yeah. He is the Pac-12 player that, of course, road teams love, road fans that love to do. No, you need his energy on the road. You really do. And, and there's a give and take. you got to allow him, if you're Coach Lloyd, to, to make some mistakes because, you know, on the other end, there's going to be some big shots he's going to hit for you in, in a type of game like today. Now, we are underway from inside Hackett. Of course, it was... The Huskies who took a halftime lead into the locker room not that long ago in Tucson against these Wildcats, but it was Arizona who eventually won. Deion Brooks Jr. pulls up. He's got a strong mid-range game, but this one off the mark. Now these type of games too, when you're playing against an Arizona team, you know their bread is buttered from that three-point line and with their bigs. You've got to be active in this zone. Use your hands. You have to communicate. We call it tap and chat. Touch a guy and then tell a teammate he's coming. Now the no-look pass. They swing it out. Here is Courtney Ramey. And the board brought down by Keon Brooks Jr. He had 16 and 9 in that loss on the road to Tucson. Block right away. There is Umar Balo. And this is where you have to take advantage if you're Arizona. Don't allow that zone to set up. Back to Henderson. Balo regains at a fresh 20 seconds for the Wildcats. Creesa knocks it down. That's what he does. I mean, that's where most of his shots are going to come from. You know, those longer rebounds or those... those Second opportunities they get, he's the one guy in the perimeter you really have to find. A junior from Estonia. Noah Williams has started to hit his stride after missing much of the year because of knee surgery. He's 12 points shy of a thousand, make it 10 now. Takes a little pressure off of Keon Brooks as well to not have to go out there and, and have something happen offensively every trip down. Cabellos has it knocked loose, a foul. Number six, Arizona, led by Tommy Lloyd, his second season. He recently became the fastest coach to 50 wins in conference history, eighth fastest in NCAA history, but of a homecoming of sorts for Lloyd as well, a Kelso Washington native, of course, longtime Gonzaga assistant. Stavellis gets the bunny, misses, and Mia pulls down the board, the seven-footer. Yeah, dodged the bullet. Washington can't stand and watch. You, know, you got to find, especially Stavellis, from six feet away. They, they got lucky there. Well, Williams puts on the brakes. Can't put it through, though. There comes Creesa. Skip pass ahead. Loose ball. And last touch by the Huskies. Well, this head coaching matchup features a couple of long-time assistants for very storied programs. Hopkins, of course, over two decades assistant for Syracuse. Their top assistant twice has been the Pac-12 Coach of the Year. And his team enters today 13 and 9. They're trying to get to the back break even point of 500 in conference play. Well, that is picked off by Minifield. Very athletic freshman. Ball movement. Brooks for three. Hits. Just have to make the point talking to Mike Hopkins. He said, when that ball goes through, touches Braxton Mia's hands, good things happen. Now, that was a, a bailout pass a little bit. From Bajima to Mia, and then he found Brooks. So there you see again holding true. Now there is the little bunny put through. Ajudas Tabellas. He's the Pac 12's leading scorer and rebounder. He averages 20 a night. Hey, you're going to need a wing to really sag in just a little bit in that zone. You can't allow Tabellas to roam. Look, he's he struggled a little bit of longer range shooting the ball, but. Anywhere inside of 12 feet, you gotta know where he is. Here you go. Braxton Mia never gonna do too much. Doesn't even put it on the floor. Finds Brooks. And great job by Keon Brooks of popping out to that corner. Minifield taking a ball. And he finishes. You can't count it. Now this is just a, a nice job by Minnie getting in there. High left hook. 
and that was on Kirk Risa. This is on the clear out, you're right. Yeah, on Mia. Yeah, it should be white ball. And it is. And they're going to get that cleaned up. Look, this is a game Mike Hopkins told us. This is a, a game that most would circle on the, the, the UW calendar. Uh, going to be a sellout in this building today. Two hands. Braxton Mia's first bucket with authority. Really believe he has to get touches, post-ups, out of bounds under there, pick and rolls, pick and slips. You just have to keep the bigs of Arizona occupied with him. Apollo takes him on. He couple of fakes, and he puts it through. It's too deep. You know, the bigs catch it that low. It's, it's trouble for you, and the, there just isn't the size after Mia to compete with both the bigs of Arizona when the ball gets that deep. Yeah, Apollo has uh, travel call. Let's take a look at, at you at Azulis Tabellis on this inbound play. Just real quick, turns his head. Great job by <laughs> Braxton Mia to, to be efficient with his cut. Henderson pulls up. And he's able to get it over Mia, Cedric Henderson, his fourth game in the starting lineup. He gets his first bucket. Well, he talked, a lot of talk has come about Helen Larson coming off the bench the last three games, now four, but not enough talk about Cedric Henderson and what he's meant to this starting lineup. Well, Bajima, a little out of control, and he's able to tap it and controlled by Mia. Ten on the shot clock now. Brooks pulls up. Bottle coming at him, it doesn't matter. On a little unforced error there by Julius Tabellis. It's going to be Husky Ball when we come back. But this is just pack 12. Halftime Arizona got 18 points from Tabellis, however, and a huge three with under a minute left from Boswell. Brooks missing a potential game tying three, five seconds left, and Arizona held on for a three point win in Tucson. Timeout called by Bay. Oh, they call it five second. He tried to call the timeout. You think about it, this Arizona team had 20 points off of 17 UW turnovers in that first matchup. That, that, that first matchup, too, the second half, Arizona was still off balance a little bit. Ended up shooting just over 36%. So that defense, that zone, it got to them a little bit. But you can't have unforced turnovers, especially out of bounds underplays, Aaron. Not at home. Henderson left open for the wing. Front iron. Bottle can't hold on. And many fields. Scrappy loose ball rebound. It's another important aspect of a game like today. The Littles have to come back and help their guys rebound. Brooks, not about it. Puts it on the deck. Now, Minifield will take this and bangs it through. It's a nice job by Brooks not forcing anything. Probably could have put it down again. Try to use that foot speed against the Bellis. But having confidence in your teammates is another aspect of leadership. Tubelis throws the shoulder and is able to bank it through. It's interesting, in that break, we saw Detlef Shrimp receive an award here for Brad, and he reminds me, or Tubelis reminds me a little bit of Detlef Shrimp. Bay pulls the trigger. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Jamal Bay has struggled from behind the arc this year, but he knocks down his first try today. You hear coaches, especially at the NBA level, talk about the game. It's a make-miss game. You got to make shots, easy shots when you get them open. Bay saves it from minifield. The Huskies feel good about letting Tubelis have that shot all day? I think so. Brooks. Testing his range a little bit. Hasn't shot it as well early season. They thought he might have extended that range, but still not quite comfortable that far out. Rami Weaving. Henderson, and he steps out of bounds. Goldie, I think I've had every game I've done this season, someone has stepped out of bounds on that sideline. This, the court is shrinking. This is just a terrific skip pass. Many knocks it down, confidence, and then Bay, again, you don't come out there. Bay has a size advantage over Parisa and the confidence there goes down.
B.J. Fuller, number four, and White on the floor for the first time. Really important to take care of the basketball. Every guy who comes in, they have to be reminded as guards, take care of the ball. You can't give this Arizona team extra possessions. Now, Pella Larson has also checked in for the first time. The junior from Sweden, he just picks up the foul. Now, they move Larson back to a sixth-man role. They love his energy off the bench. Mia back to the basket, a couple of seven-footers. Now, Larson with a little help. Minute field. Knocks down another! And again, the ball has to touch Braxton Mia's hands because now the defense will turn and look and they're late to recover, although that wasn't a terrible challenge on a deep three. Parisa, one dribble, pop, oh. drops it in. His second triple already. Hey, we had that conversation with Coach Hopkins before the game about shooters and sometimes they're just more comfortable when someone's running at them than when you have just too much time and you're wide open. You see two guys, the last couple possessions, knocking down shots with a hand in their face. Brooks. Contested foul. Counted. What a finish from the elbow. Awesome to see Keon Brooks understanding he has the ability, the speed, the height, and athleticism to go by guys no matter who they put on him. A lot of NBA scouts perked up this season when they saw his first few games, and he's really done a, a great job of not just scoring but leading his team. Uh, Coach Hopkins is going and putting his team all the way back. Brooks a chance for a three-point play here. That was the second foul already on Larson, by the way. Three-point play complete. Uh, two things. You got confidence in your foul shooter, but also this is the third or fourth best team defensively rebounding. So let's just get back, get set up in our zone. Cabellas. Short. Gets the miss. And count it. Got to understand your work isn't done. He just keeps coming at you and at you. And more times than not, at least... The games we've seen of him this season, he's the best player on the floor. Keon Brooks may have something to say about that today, but at least down low, you just have to understand more guys have to come down once he shoots that ball and help your teammates out on the glass. Feeling pretty good. This is Boswell up top. Smaller look right now for the Wildcats. Henderson short corner. Twenty-three sixteen. Yeah, hundred and first college game today, and last game. Over a thousand points for his career and just the length the athleticism really finding his niche Sometimes when you're out of school a couple of years, you don't feel like you know, they're letting you kind of you don't fit the system Well, he's really done a nice job of fitting into Mike Hopkins system here. Pretty soon I think it's deflected Henderson underneath and Bay with the long arms Huskies had another overtime win recently a part of those four games against Cal as well I got to keep that ball moving, especially when you see defenses retreating. Can't be a ball stopper against Arizona, meaning don't hold the ball. You see some numbers or guys off balance defensively. Keep swinging it. Make the defense shift. Shot clock under 10 now. Fuller trying to get the traffic moving. Five to shoot. Ball knocked three. That is Husky ball. Three on the shot clock. Yeah, but deflections, Aaron, so important. Even when you poke the ball away, now a second and a half goes off. Only three. Long way to go. Three seconds here. Oh, and Fuller and some miscommunication with Corin Johnson. Again, set up by the poke away. The deflection 
Just that little play means a lot in a game like this. Badgema checks in for Fuller. Now Fuller's had some turnover problems, to say the least, so far this season. Second worst turnover rate in the conference. And it looks like Braxton Mia has taken the floor as well. Takes over for Langston Wilson. You have to be very possessive <laughs> with the ball. You just have to understand, especially this time of year, every single possession has to have the utmost value. Henderson, corner three, bags it. Again, Larson coming off the bench, numbers have gone up. But Cedric Henderson has, has really done a nice job of fitting well into that starting role. Now, both teams have had a pretty good stroke from behind the arc to begin things here in the first half. And it's thrown behind Wilson. Cedric Henderson Jr. Swing, swing. Three ball corner pocket with only a couple of people, but I think they're better suited to play a slower pace Arizona. I really do. I think it gets their big set. It keeps their bigs out of foul trouble. It also allows that three-point line to, to spread out. Grisa, you know, guys love to, to knock down shots from out there. And when you give guys a chance to get back and you slow the pace, you can get your things set better. Ramey, another guy. Most of his shots come from behind the arc. Johnson curling. Oh, little hold there. I was going to say Mia's got to roll. He's got to roll hard. Like Henderson might have held him up on the roll. That is on Henderson. Last three games for this Arizona defense, you can see they've won all three and they've held their opposition to no more than 66 points, 52 and 58 most recently against the Bruins and the Cougars. A little revenge win against the Cougs. And this defense has really clamped down. In the field, the runner, the bounce, Mia controls the kick out for Johnson. Oh, Minifield climbing the ladder. Brooks thought about it. Cabela's closing. Hanging. Another chance. Henderson the block. Boy, what a stand by Arizona. Ahead. Cabela's beyond his reach. Right back to the Huskies. It's such a tough play for Henderson. He's done everything right on the offensive end. And then you, you come down, do a nice job defensively. You get a little block here. Sometimes your emotions get the best of you in that. Now you want to throw it ahead. You've done your job. Again, value that possession, especially on the road. Follow back on the floor for Arizona. Short front iron from Johnson. I love the fight Washington showing. They're not afraid of that number six in front of Arizona's name. They don't, they're not thinking about the last game. It's all about being present. They move it quickly. Boswell, follow, point blank. They really like Boswell. He's done a nice job for them. You know, not overly athletic, but, but really solid. Saw it there, had a bigger player on him, recognized, put on the floor, draw him, and find your big. Apollo 12th in the nation in field goal percentage. He was held to just one point in their recent win against Washington State on the road. He had been in double figures every game until then. Mia backing him down. Loose ball, not free by Apollo. Here comes to Bellis. Now Mia's got to get touches, but he doesn't have to be an offensive threat down there in terms of scoring the ball. Now they were trying for the big to big lob. Mia. Looks like he might have walked, no call, and he throws it away. Washington always feels like they're walking a tightrope there, and you know, they throw it ahead when you just don't need it. Probably got away with a little travel and then eventually turned it over, but look at this ball movement. That's because Tavellis draws a couple, finishes with Boswell, and then he puts it on the floor and finds a big fella down low. That's, that is the definition of team basketball, giving up good, good shots to get great ones. Huskies with four turnovers over the last four and a half minutes. Noah Williams back on the floor for the Dogs. Doubled up. Now foul. Oh, that's a 
tough one. That ball is exposed and out and extended. You got to let him play through that. I don't know if I agree with that. Not in a game like this. Under H has ever got him to 50 wins faster in conference history than that man. He's got an awesome energy about him. Don't you think? We were in the locker room. He just just gets it. No coach speak. You know, he's not just filling in the blanks when you talk to him. You're just saying that because he's taller than he thought he was. He, he has some good size. <laughs> Really does. Well, they try to lock it again, and this time they convert to Bellis to follow. It's interesting. Tabellis comes in this game with two more turnovers than assists. But again, he's another one of those guys that you, you just you gotta have him in there being a distrib the distributor, especially big to big. What I love most about this pass is he recognizes being a big guy that just throw it to where only Ballo can catch it and Ballo could barely control that one and, and, and a nice play by Ballo to not try to dunk them a lot of times big players want the highlight instead of just the soft hand tip in on time Lloyd has to do with that a starting point card Kirk Reese's second foul he's on the bench and Larson takes his spot Brooks regains Williams with five to shoot. Oh, and he knocks it down. So yeah, they've scored one-on-one. -on -one, those pull-up threes, they've scored out of offensive sets, just sharing the basketball. This end of the floor, it's, they have to continue that cat-and-mouse game, what you're going to give up. Boswell kicks it up top. Ramey, a whistle as he hits the deck. How about that? That's just a, a rookie mistake, but this is a beautiful pull-up. No, Williams, we talked about how, you know, battled some injuries, really starting to hit his flow, seven points to end the game in overtime last game. So he's, he's a guy that, again, he, he takes a lot of pressure off of Keon Brooks. Now three coming here. Ramey, one of the conference's best three-point shooters, has had his struggles for whatever reason at the free throw line this season. This is the final. Well, I tell him to move over and try to get that right shoulder lined up with the front of the rim instead of splitting it. That was a good, good shot from our camera guys there. See how he was lined up. Williams weaving. Williams taking on Larson. Minifield. He's knocked down two. Mia. Offensive board. Knocks it back and a foul coming. Yeah, and, and that's where Braxton Mia is really in a, in a spot. He hasn't been in a ton. You get an offensive rebound. Nice job tapping it to yourself. Look, you got two trees in there. You may have to realize someone's going to be open. Two bigs are on me. Let me try to kick this ball out. And I understand pumping your own gas, which I know you probably don't pump your own gas when you hit me. Only in Oregon. Yes, only so. in Oregon. But when you get a rebound, an offensive rebound, you want to go back up and recognize the numbers are against you. Yeah, that's his second foul, so he's on the bench. Langston Wilson takes his spot. That's a kick from Kovadjima, an easy call. So you actually pump your own gas in, in, in I, I, Oregon or, or only in, well, in, in Oregon? They don't they don't let you pump your own oh, gas. Oh, okay. So so but when you come yeah. back to Washington State, you, then it's back to normal. You think that you're still in Oregon, <laughs> expecting someone to pump your gas. If only it was that easy. That. <laughs> Ramey corner three. Pajma with an emphatic rebound. Look at Bajma involved a little bit, driving his guy. Well, he takes on Umar Balo. Wilson. That's a mini field. The runner, boy, is that been a strong point of his game today, along with a couple of threes. He's in double figures. Good job by Wilson, though. Again, we just talked about it with Mia. Come down, you get an offensive rebound, find an open teammate. Now, Minifield's got a game-high 10 points. Another kick. I love the speed recognition. Go by one big, float it over a 
mid-sized guy. Mini is uh, really, really has a different motor at times. Oh, this is intercepted. Noah Williams right there pushes it ahead. Mini will take it off. Listen to this building. 30-25. Washington leading Arizona. Remember, Washington had the lead at halftime. A one-point lead in Tucson. It was Arizona who won the second half and eventually won the game. Maintaining the lead. Remember, they had a 14-point lead in that game as well. Second foul on Keon Brooks Jr. Yeah, I think they're going to give that one to Noel Williams, which Noel Williams does a great job. He lifts his hand up to right. say that's my foul. They do, yes. Cabellus, a very good free throw shooter, 10th in the conference. And it's a little thing, but it's great recognition by Noel Williams to put his hand up as the ref's looking. Because you understand, you don't want your teammate, especially... And his last name is Brooks Jr. To, to pick up another foul in a game like this. Especially not at this, this pace when you have a little momentum. Larson to the bench. And that's the first foul on Noah Williams. Williams had a magnificent overtime performance in the recent win against Arizona State. Field. Pulls up. Loose ball. Control Brooks. Fading. And that's a foul. They're going to get Wilson over the back. Yeah, that was a tough one by Brooks. I think he was already in his in that elevation stage when he caught it. So he really couldn't come down and kick that ball out. And Wilson just goes over the back of Ballo. And with 442 to play in the first half in the bonus now. One and one coming. Ballo, just a 58% free throw shooter. He has not lacked attempts or opportunity this year. He is ninth in the nation in free throw attempts. This will be his first attempts this game. And he gets the front end. Thing you have to really respect about this Arizona team is that they're never too up, never too down. Kirk Parisa, you take him out of the mix because he he can he can get pretty fiery and also such an emotional player. He can get way, really down, especially on himself. But outside of that, never seem to see any panic in these Wildcats. Now Bono hasn't missed a shot today. He's three for three from the field, two for two from the line. A couple of boards to go along with it. One point game now. Bajima left open. And it's a deadly shooter, but misses that one too strong. Here comes Creesa. Yeah, I don't think he was really in rhythm either. Trying to counter on the other end and rattles out from Ramey. Yeah, Bajima hasn't taken a shot other than that today, so. It's the second shot. So sometimes when you haven't gotten a lot of touches, you just say, next one I get, I got to let it go. Benjamin drives, finds an open Williams. A little fake. Step back. Three. Oh, bad miss. Everything but the make. Nice shot fake. If you had the over-under of three kicks in the first half, <laughs> Benjamin's got you covered. Right now, Huskies by one. To learn more about Coaches versus Cancer and setting the screen to save lives for cancer, visit coaches.cancer.org. Hop rocking the Husky Adidas. Oh, knocked away by Brooks, his second block. Brooks had a strong first half. Four rebounds, ten points, a couple of blocks. Kind of thought this game was going to be a defensive battle. Teams 
Shooting well from three, eight combined. Three pointers made, but both teams in the 40s, and, and Washington just at 40% from the field. Second on Henderson. That brings on Courtney Ramey to take his spot, the Texas grad transfer. Williams playing his 10th game of the season, had a right knee injury in the opener. Had to have surgery, missed a lot of time. Brooks pulls up. Oh, and he backs it. He's got a dozen. And you called it that that mid-range game. He's got it. Put him in the post, falls away. He, he really uses his length in those long arms so well. This is thrown away. Husky ball. It's a miscommunication. Hopkins said, you know, in a game like this, you need your guy to be the guy. And this little two-foot jump stop, not, not an easy shot. Either you're between, you could go off the backboard, you could shoot it straight in. Special. We'll stay on this end. Now, Brooks now in double figures in eight straight games. He's coming off 22 points in that overtime win against the Sun Devils. Williams three seasons at the Huskies in-state rival former Coog He pulls up an open look He's got seven in the first half Tell you what Noah Williams and Keon Brooks jr. Have brought back the lost art That mid-range pull-up jump shot. It's so good, especially when you get the defense retreating Follow good move and follow a finish right there at the rim more skilled. I think than he gets then he gets credit for really good feet. He's still yet to miss a shot today. Brooks thought about it. And he'll raise up and dunk on you, but you saw the nice little step through there by Ballo. This is deflected. Take a look. You know, big guys, I just don't think they get enough credit for being smart players and, and, and witty. High IQ. That's a terrific play there. Even though he probably could have gone up, gotten fouled, steps through and tears it down. Brooks wants a three. Quickly skipping ahead. A shot is to Bellis, the running dunk. One point game. Well, the thing about Arizona, which Washington knows after being up 14 last game, can't get comfortable when you get a lead. No, this is an offensive foul to send it back to Arizona. Yeah. And when they look at that tape, they'll see, okay, who was running, who was walking, and who got off to a slow start defensively, and that's what caused that. Also a terrific pass and a big running like he's a, a guard. Under 90 seconds, Carissa. Oh, Carissa nails the triple. Yeah, he's letting the fans know about it a little bit. It's the first lead for Arizona since this game was 3-2 Wildcats. Under a minute to play the first half. Brooks regains. Shot clock at six. Now at three. Williams. Well, this is not going to be easy. Barely grazes the iron and it falls to Balo. Boswell sprints it ahead. Cabellus, open look. Well, when you're playing against the zone, you have to do one thing more than any find the lines and if you can get a guy there who can score and distribute you're in a good way and that's to Bellis. Wildcats have knocked down their last four shots it's a nine nothing run in about two minutes for Arizona to close out the first half shot clock is off midfield it's past to Bellis taking on bottle oh the two-hand finish Wilson rises above 
That takes us to halftime, and you can feel the air kind of getting sucked out of this building, and now a little one point. And yep. those are games as a big you're saying, see, it, it, it's, it's you, not me. Like most like most of your girlfriends said when you were younger, it's you, not me. <laughs> That's what Balo's saying to his teammates. You know, the season low doesn't really tell the whole story. Yeah. He had been in double figures every game, so to say it was a season low is kind of an understatement. <laughs> and thank you for digging into my personal history. Listen, I, you know. You know nothing. We could have waited till the under 12. Nothing is sacred when we do games together. Goldie. Well, it was Washington who led at halftime in Tucson. The Wildcats pulled away and beat the Huskies. Remember the last time the Huskies beat, here's Brooks. He had a great first half, two strong off the heel. Last time the Huskies beat a top 10 team, it was in 2018 against this team in this building. Ramey. Anderson saves it back to Balo. Beautiful skip pass and, and a whistle right there on the block. Braxton Mia has to understand how important he is on the floor. You, you know, you, there's no advantage when you kind of give a guy a nudge with a knee and he's not really in a scoring spot. You got some help on the double. Save those fouls in a game like this. Yeah, third foul on Mia. Tavellas, well, he's had that option nearly all day long. And that's the shot that the wings and the guards from Arizona State missed against Washington. That, that, that's why they couldn't really get it going. Now that was a thing of beauty. There is Mia upstairs in the attic. It's a nice job because you, you, you got to understand you don't know how much longer he's going to be on the floor. So take advantage of him on that offensive end. Tavellas doesn't take many. Misses that one. Feet weren't right. You know, they just a little off balance. Minute field. And can he run and finish? A dozen. He ties it up. Teresa, that's a deep three. Brooks, a couple of Huskies spill. Mia and Brooks both late to get back down. Bajima, corner three, open. They really need Bajima to, to knock down a couple of shots just for his confidence, obviously for the scoreboard, but also to gain some respect from the defense to pay more attention. Uh, he had 16 in the earlier matchup. Scoreless so far today. Ramey. It's a swatted free. Henderson, good pass. Kubelis, no whistle. Brooks gets the rebound. They push it ahead. Bajima taking on Carissa. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that would have been one way to get your first bucket. Great contest by Braxton Mia not getting that foul. Worried about his foul. But look at the over-the-top to Braxton Mia from Minifield and many. Big at the rim. Third foul on Creesa. See what I did there, Mini? Yeah, no, it was and nice. Then, I actually think there was, I exuded some jealousy when you said that. I'm just making sure your headset's working uh, over there. I, just, I wasn't in a good headspace to commend you quite yet for that. Bajima, the best free throw shooter in the conference, 88%. He gets the first. He gets them both. And even a free throw or two will help a shooter get it going. You know, and I think his teammates understand. Uh, you, you love Williams knocking down shots, Minifield, Brooks, but you need Bajima to knock down one or two before this game's over. Yeah, he's a shooter. Henderson slams on the brakes. Follow. Doubled up. They swing it around. Ramey on the deck gives it up. What a pass and what a finish. Cabellas with 16 a game high. Not free. Two hands. Mia, they've all looked like that today from Braxton Mia. I, I love that he knows how to finish. You know, it's just what you get from veteran players. They don't go up to try to lay it up when they have that size. They try to put you in the basket. Teresa left open a corner three in the pocket. He knocks it down. That's his fourth triple. You just, it's shooting practice for him. That wide open, short corner threes. 
We had enough time to check the wind direction on that one. Not free that time off the hands of Ramey. And they, they do a nice job. Go for it. Steal or deflection there by Badgerman. And, and then you pay for it because Greece is wide open in the corner and you're in that zone. There's no one really who can recover to help you. Williams four to shoot now. Badgerman's got to put it up. Almost banked it in. Get the defensive rebound, to, even if there's two guys going after it. Brooks strips, turns it over, and a chance for U of A inside Heckhead. Tabellis can't finish. Balo, and it's a foul on the ground as Balo hits the deck. We've got a timeout on the floor, 15 21, and a big triple. You know, when you're in, when you're younger, you worry so much about what people think about you. And for a guy like her, Chris said, to come in and not care, to be able to be himself, you know, not worry about anything other than winning and, and, and enjoying winning, I think it's just wonderful for the game. He has two triple doubles on his career resume. Loose ball, and Minifield picks up the foul. That's his third. He's been a great spark for the Huskies. Really more than a spark. The spark is almost underselling it when he is meant to the docks today. That's his third foul. And he'll get a breather. Corin Johnson, the true freshman. He takes the spot. Jamal Bay. He's among the most steals in program history. Playing in his 141st career game today, more than any other dog ever. Brooks. Off the screen. Johnson. Little runner. Too strong. Balo is able to save it to Creesa. Teresa hits the deck, and Corin Johnson, who just checked in, gets his first. I, I know Johnson is saying that Teresa, you know, throws his arm up here, but this is just a smart play. You can't put yourself in a position like that if you're Johnson. Just get back around and get in position to defend. Teresa is too smart once you try to reach in or he's got you off balance. Henderson out, Pella Larson in for the Wildcats. Ballo. Short distance is good. Ballo with 12 points, and he is, this is a broken record at this point. He's still yet to miss. He's 5 for 5 from the field, 2 for 2 from the line. Badgema is still without a made field goal today. His only points have come from a pair of free throws. Brooks taking on two ballots. Fading. Larson cross court pass. Creesa. He wants his fifth. You can dial him in for automatic status today. And the extra passes are really what's making Arizona start to feel themselves. 15 assists, third in America, and assists per game at 19. They're going to catch that one if they keep this going. Washington is doing it in his own. But look at all that space. 
at the top of the key area, that means Arizona is doing it right, even when there's a ton of activity and talking and hands in the lanes. And it's just right now, you have to make a decision. Do you let Balo shoot the floater, or do you step up and now he drops it off? It's, it's a tough spot for Washington. Oh, meanwhile, that looked like a pretty easy call for the official offensive foul on Noah Williams. Now, Huskies held scoreless for about 340. Pella Larson taking that one. Meanwhile, it's an 11-0 run for Arizona. They're trying to add on. Now, we talked about Mike Hopkins and a little bit of his history, but he played this, coached in this when he was at Syracuse. And I have to be honest, playing against it is not fun unless you're knocking down threes. Creso with 18 points wow. they have all come from downtown. He has matched the season best with his sixth triple. And it really is effortless. You know, he, he's not forcing anything. I think the respect that the zone is giving the bigs is allowing him to have that extra space. on Creaso. That's his fourth. I mean, the one conversation I'd have to have with him is, listen, you're scoring and making all those threes. You might have to give up a two. You might have to give up a steal just to stay on the floor. It'll be interesting to see how long he's on the bench. It's right now a 14-0 run for Arizona. I was taught, listen, when you're scoring a lot of points, let them say you're a bad defender. At least in that game. <laughs> you can call me a bad defender. Especially when I'm leading the, the game in scoring. Williams steps back, but Larson closes on him. Bay. They gave Balo in the air. The foul on Balo, and Jamal Bay will shoot two. Now, really impressive. We talk about the fouls. Tabellus and Balo, the two bigs combined, that's their first foul. And in the first half, there was more attacking, getting downhill from Washington. That's really the first one we've seen in the second half. And, you know, you can't just go up and, and, and challenge because you know the big's going to contest. You do what Bay just did, jump stop, fundamentals, shot fake, and, and make the bigs go for blocks because that's what they want to do is block everything. Huskies need some points. Bay gets the first. This is the second, too strong. Huskies just need to move that basketball. Only five assists in this game on 18 made field goals. That tells me a lot of individual play that it just doesn't hold up late game. Especially when you're digging yourself out of a hole. Ramey. Oh, it touched every bit of that orange rim. And finds the bottom. We well, talk about turnovers being contagious, crashing the glass, but in this game, threes. Teresa goes out, Ramey knocks one down. Wildcat shooting 45% from deep. Here's Bay, he's knocked down one. Bono rips down the rebound. Wow. Good pass, big to big, and an easy bucket. Tabellus has 18. I'm not sure Pella Larson was actually throwing that to anyone other than just up high to Valo. And sometimes when the game's going your way, those plays work out for you. Wow. Williams blows pass. Tabellus fouled. Counted a chance for three for the Dogs. Everything's starting to click for Arizona. Yeah, they come out in the country, but that dude right there on the right, it's a huge reason why this team had a lot of success when he played. Chance for a three-point play. Double figures for Noah Williams. He's two points shy of a 1,000 for his career now. All right, a little reset for the Huskies. Extending that zone out, Kirk Kreese is out, so you don't have to leave those gaps inside as much. Still got to cover the guys.
But the talking again, the tap and chat. Touch a guy as he runs through and you tell him, come in your way, come in your way. You got to talk. Ramey up top. Good pass. Back door. Larson foul. That's a great job of just turn the corner even against that zone. Now you got to make a decision. Do you step up and help the defender who's man is driving at you or do you back up and Williams got himself caught in the middle no man's land there first foul on Jamal Bay now Larson a tremendous free throw shooter second of the conference 86 percent that was interesting and Tommy Lloyd said when he wanted to make the decision or he's thinking about it of bringing Larson off the bench he almost said he wanted to clear it with him, with the player. You know, if he wasn't comfortable with it, then Tommy Lloyd wasn't going to do it. And Helen Larson said, if it means we're going to win, and quite frankly, he's playing the same amount of minutes. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where you are, where you sit in this, Aaron. If you if you'd rather start and play 15 minutes or finish the game and play 30. <laughs> Brooks has been held silent since halftime until now. They need him to get hot over the final 10 minutes and change. They really do, especially going small ball. Obama's well, going to have to guard a small guy out there. Just have to make the right decision. Henderson. A little up and under, and Badgerman with the bump foul, and Henderson will shoot two. Nice, the veteran understands the game, been around the block a few times, knows how to wheel and deal down there, use that great length. Dad played in the NBA, probably learned a lot from him. Now Cedric Henderson, five seasons in the NBA, Cavs and Warriors. Henderson's had a great college career. Campbell transfer, first year with the Wildcats, over 1,300 career points. Yeah, such a luxury to have a guy who's willing, who scored that many points in his college career to say, okay, listen, you're going to come help us. You're not going to be the feature guy, but you can be a part of us really potentially winning a national title. It's a special kind of player to be able to understand that role. He gets both. Meanwhile, the Huskies have committed seven fouls at the 10-minute mark, essentially, midway through the second half. So that will be a factor here. Johnson kind of running out of a move. It's a foul on the floor. He got bailed out a little bit. That's the throw down to Henderson. I thought the hit came a little bit before that. Brooks had a dozen in the first half. Minifield. That miss. Still would love to see UW pull Valo away from the basket a little bit. Just a little bit. Now how do you do that? See how he plays it. You know, put him in a pick and roll high. Even, even though you're going a little bit smaller, it pulls him away from the basket. Larson, oh, pretty pass. That is with authority. Bono. He has been perfect today. Their activity and their willingness to share the basketball, the Wildcats, is why they've gotten this lead. 19 assists on 24 made field goals. Minifield, meanwhile, on the other end, gets that two right back. Yeah, both gone undefeated. They're averaging identical passing yards per game. Completion percentage is just a little bit of a push for Brock Purdy. That should be a great one. Looking forward to watching that. Can we just get a, a, a fan cam just on the Philly fans? <laughs> that is must-see TV. Woo. Really, either way. Yeah. Philly fans are a little bit more edgy than any other fan base the Eagles fans that I've seen in a long time. Mia has checked back in the seven-footer for the Huskies. Many field. And I'll tell you what, he does not mind going amongst the trees. He has 16 to lead the dogs.
Pay attention to that foul line. Henderson just beneath the foul line, stripped. Stripped by Johnson, he gets it back. That is a tough two, and he buries it. Offense are off. As soon as the ball gets to that foul line area, even though it was, there was a deflection poked away from Henderson, he gets it back, and now there's a breakdown defensively, and he knocks down a, a tough one. And Brooks. Brooks hits. That's his third triple. And right at that eight-minute mark for Washington, you don't want to go back and forth. This is where you got to put a, a nice little possession for possession together. Get a stop here, get a bucket at the other end, and then another stop. For Arizona, you just got to keep finding that interior space. Really been stretched out in the paint. Meanwhile, hey, Arizona's made their last seven shots. Can they make it eight? There's your answer. Gosh. Really does play with so much control. Never too up, Azulis. Tabellis never down. Brooks. A little start, stop, and a foul going on Boswell. We have a timeout on the floor. 7-13 to play in this one. Number six, Ares. Emily, I mean, they're scraping their head on the Raptors. You, you know, that's my mom, the blonde right there, the beautiful blonde. My brother's with the striped jacket, my sister-in-law. Well, they, they have those seats because I didn't go to school here. That's the issue. <laughs> they're they're they, still holding it against they'd you. They'd be on the floor next to dead left shrimp if I would have gone to school here. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Huskies have made their last three shots. Johnson into the corner, Brooks. Uh, he'll take it after all. Oh, and they need him, and he is starting to feel it. He's got three triples since halftime. That's a nice job out of a timeout. It's so important. You're down. you got to try to make a little run here. Pay attention to what the staff tells you coming out of a timeout. Meanwhile, Arizona's made their last eight shots. Her crease is back on the floor. Late closeout. Too strong. Ballo taps it. Bajima gets his hand on it. Here comes Minifield. Huskies trying to cut the lead to single digits. Wow, a lot of, lot of, lot of body there. Could have been Crease's fifth. Tubella skips it up. Oh, that has been there all day between those two. Tubella's. The big, the big game has been strong. Bottle seven for seven from the floor. And here's here's the interesting thing, Aaron. Only their fourth fast break point. <laughs> I mean, there's a, there's been a lot of secondary breaks that they've taken advantage of. How about Bajima taking it right to the chops of Bolo. No foul. First field goal made for Cole Bajima. And this is where you have to hunker down if you're Washington. Try to get a stop. Under six minutes, you can't go basket for basket anymore. Easier said than done. Especially the confidence that Arizona's playing with the second half. Overhead skip pass, Ballo. Come on. Automatic. <laughs> Tubelis has 20. Ballo now has 18. And it feels like half of those have been assisted by Tubelis. I mean, it just, sometimes it's just not fair. I mean, I don't even know if that was a, an intended bounce pass. <laughs> I, I've never thrown a bounce pass from over my head 10 feet away, but. Corn Johnson. Oh. Way short. Larson. Strips. Blocks. Defense by Mia. Midfield pushing. Now Johnson will try it again. I mean, this has to be Keon Brooks Jr. time. When we talked to Mike Hopkins before the game, he told us we need him to be the guy. And, and this is the time of the game I think he's talking about. He'll dig him out of a hole, but his teammates have to understand that. Under five to play. Ramey. Presa can he bag another. It's a rare miss. Oh, Tabellis with the rebound. Follows his miss. Fouled. Counted. Three-point opportunity coming. I mean, Tabellis just plays with set. Arizona ended the first half on a 9-2 run. And they've had a dynamite second half. Tabellis and Bottle both with double doubles secure. Three point play for Tabellis. 
Well, it's kind of what they do. You know, they, you know you're going to get 40 and 20 from the two bigs right. just trying to guard that three-point line. Oh, a little high for me, a tough thing to do. And a foul is called, and that's to me a little frustration. That's the fifth on Mia. He is done. It's a tough one there. Again, the ball's high. Two guys going for it. There's, Aaron, there's always going to be some contact. To me, that's where the, the officials have to kind of have a feel, knowing that he's in uh, foul trouble. You know, that's one you might say, let's call it a jump ball even if, if one player doesn't come away with it. But it's a tough one. Now the seven-footer is done. And Langston Wilson takes his spot. And look, I don't care what the score is. I know there's, you know, 4-16 and there's a, a big lead here for Arizona. But still, that's a situation where you never know what kind of run Washington could go on with Braxton Mia on the floor. And now... The Huskies are just one foul away from putting Arizona into double bonus the rest of the way. Just over four minutes to go in this one. Now, Tabellis had 18 and 10 versus UW in Tucson earlier. That started a run of posting a double double in what is now seven of his last eight games, including his double double today. He's got a game high 25 points. And what a luxury for Tommy Lloyd to have. You know your two bigs every game are giving you 40 and 20. And just filling the gaps around that. Boy. Well, special. Langston Wilson was left wide open. He decided to try to take it. Arizona ball. Now, Kirk Priest has had a big second half. He's knocked down six three-pointers in this game. Now the Huskies defend the three so well. Arizona shooting just over 40% from distance today. Shot clock at seven. Follow. Follow kisses it off the glass. And it rims through. Follow has been an absolute menace today, along with Tubelis. He has 20 points now. Both the bigs with 20. And it is a flagrant. Two shots coming here for Balo. It's interesting how the rules change. With these definitions, every foul that I had as a player, <laughs> every single foul I committed was a flagrant one. If that's a flagrant one, 100% of the fouls I committed was a flagrant one. Maybe a two in there every once in a while. That first free throw, by the way, which Paulo missed, that was his first missed shot of the day. Follows nine for nine from the floor, and now three of four from the strike. He said inbounds. Ramey. Ramey splashes down. It's his third triple. And there was some extra air underneath that one, too. Now four Wildcats in double figures today. Biggest lead of the night for Arizona. They have pulled away in the second half. Wilson, little scoop. Wildcats ball with about three minutes to play. Well, Arizona 18 and three, number six in the country for Tommy Lloyd. Here's what's coming up at the Oregon schools at home. Now they will finish the year. It'll be really interesting. Arizona finishes the year on the road at UCLA. What will be the Bruins' senior night? It'll be an emotional game. A big one looming at the end of the regular season. I like that, though. I always like finishing on the road. It prepares you for the tournament coming up because you're out of your comfort zone a little bit. 
You know, those teams that know how to function best on the road are the teams that obviously a lot of other things come into play, but those are the teams, in my opinion, that seem to get the furthest in the NCAA tournament. Got to be able to, you know, maneuver outside of your comfort levels. Larson, uh, exceptional free throw shooter, gets them both. All four of his points have come from the stripe. Under three minutes to play now. It's a 15 nothing Arizona run. And when we talked to Tommy Lloyd earlier this year, he talked about how important these offensive runs are. Brooks now has 23 to his team and just how backbreaking they can be. And it seems like every time you look up today, especially in the second half, to be more precise, it's been some type of a run for Arizona. Uh, they have just died. Bruins and Trojans. And then they'll go to the Palouse to take on the Cougars before hosting the Oregon schools at home. Again, this is when you're, you know, this is what you do. Now you kind of have to wait for the attack. And wow, Courtney Ramey, he has knocked down four three pointers since halftime. Brooks with an air ball. Now Brooks has had a big game, you know. Hop was talking to us about how he needs Brooks to have a big game today, and he has. Can Carice get another one? It's a rare miss for Kirk Carice from behind the arc. I mean, Brooks has done his part, fair to say, but too much of the big men down low. And this one has turned into a laugher at this point. But the, the, the most impressive thing... Arizona did today. Arizona did today was sharing the basketball. 24 assists. Sometimes you get on the road, guys get hot, and, and sometimes they do it themselves. Carissa was at the other side of that where a lot of those were assisted, and that's contagious. That's what you need. The great teams, the championship teams, they play together and stay together on the road. Second line comes in now for Arizona with just under 90 seconds to play. Minifield pushes Johnson. Brooks is foul. I mean, you, when you watch Arizona walk in the building, every other player is seven feet tall. <laughs> I mean, that's what it feels like. Every other guy. I mean, they're, most of them are built like a blade of grass, but still, they're, they're still seven feet tall. Seven feet is seven feet, that's I suppose. It. Can't teach that. Brooks just recently reached a thousand points for his career. That was in the last game, the overtime win against Arizona State. Now today marks his eighth consecutive game in double figures. He'll finish the day with 25, but it's not nearly enough. Husky's just overwhelmed in the second half in particular. Wildcats is one of three Division One teams averaging 19 assists. Wow. And today they have 24. Donnie, I know you were talking about that earlier. Ooh. It's just unheard of when you have the talent that Arizona has because at times guys like to go and do their own thing and they just, guys get it. Two hand put back, flush is good. Basar, another one of those guys we talked to Tommy Lloyd about trimming that rotation. It's a solid seven, obviously, unless you get a big lead. Basar saw some playing time early, but. You always have those guys you can rely on that have given you something early in the season But this time of year is when coaches start to let's say another week and a half two weeks or so is when they really start to tighten those rotations up getting ready for whether it's the Conference tournament or the NCAA tournament Huskies were hoping that they would pick up their first top 10 win since 2018 when they beat these Wildcats in this very building. But it looked like maybe there was a chance of that to happen for the home crowd. They start again, missing the dunk. 
Now, this second half has just been dominated by Arizona. They have outscored the Huskies 55 to 34 since halftime. Under 20 seconds. doesn't appreciate that. Arizona knocking on the door. Triple digits. Oh, they saw it. Almost nothing they could do. Oh. Yeah, I, I'm always... I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. If you stop playing, am I not supposed to... If I'm standing un, and I have a zero footer? <laughs> I'm seven feet tall. <laughs> right. A minute field to the line. Everyone talks about the unwritten rule. You know what? We'll put the rule in writing. And then everyone will understand it. Yeah, Minifield has had a monster day. Joined the starting rotation just before the new year. And he has been an impact player for Coach Hopkins. But Arizona today, they come to Heckhead. And they finish the first half on a 9-2 run. And they flat out dominate half number two, and they win it 95 to 72. Arizona sweeps the dogs on the season, winning both matchups, both in two.